everybody, welcome back to another episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title, also known as your Title King. And today we have a super fantastic episode to bring to you that I'm excited. We are at the Broward County Property Appraiser's Office, and we're joined today by Marty Kerr, the uh, Broward County Property Appraiser. So thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate you having me today. It's awesome. So I've been following you on social media for quite some time. Obviously, you, you were previously the mayor elected as the property appraiser. And one of the first things I wanted to just kind of tell the viewers so they learn a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. So maybe just give a little brief history of you and, and why you do what you do, because you do it with so much energy. Oh, thank you so much. And it's so nice of you to do this. And I you know, I know we spoke about this just before, but uh, the fact that you came all the way down here to allow me to, to speak to some residents and folks is really a wonderful thing, because what I love about this job is you get to help so many people. And the best way to help people is when you can reach them. And uh, having wonderful Facebook videos and, and other means of getting out there is just an awesome thing. So thank you for doing You're that. You're very welcome. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I have to tell you, I uh, love Brer County. I've uh, lived here my entire life. I was actually born in 1977 at Plantation General Hospital. I went to Western High School, which is located in the town of Davie. Um, after that, I went to a small school called Palm Beach Atlantic University, and then I came back and went to law school at Nova Southeastern. And uh, right about that time, I got elected to serve in the Florida House of Representatives. I served there for about six years. Uh, then I got elected to serve on the Broward County Commission, uh, served as a county commissioner for two years, uh, one year as uh, the vice mayor of Broward County and the Broward County's mayor. And then in 2016, everybody in Broward County was nice enough to make me their new Broward County property appraiser. And I have to tell you, out of all the jobs I've ever had, this one I love the most because you get to interact with everybody in the county and the nature of the job just lets you help people. And uh, personally, I'm very, very lucky. I have a very beautiful wife. Her name is Kelly. I always tell folks that I married up and she settled and we have a... Uh, <laughs> two very beautiful little girls. They're nine and six, and they are just the light of my life. Awesome, well that's good. You know, one of the things that, that I've noticed, I mean, we do about 100 closings a month, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I've noticed recently, ever since your office took over, you know, it causes a little bit of frustration in our office for the purposes of that we get those letters that your deed sure. can't be processed. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed is that your staff is actually doing what they probably should have been doing years ago. Mm -hmm. So obviously it starts with the leader and, and you know obviously we take these issues, we take them very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, I email the office back super quick, I want to get them resolved, but you know it, it goes to a testament of how you run your office and, oh, and you. from the leader all the way down to the, the clerk entering the data, they're catching issues that were wrong for years. You know, wrong legal descriptions, things that just should have been caught years ago that Absolutely. now the person processing it is catching it and saying, well, no, let's get it corrected so this way the homeowner doesn't have any problems moving forward. Absolutely. And, you know, it just goes to, to your leadership, oh, so it's great. Thank you. Well, I have to tell you, we have uh, about 224 people that work for our office. And uh, what I love is, you know, I'm an elected official and everybody here is a public servant. And I always tell folks, you know, we're not here to make money. You know, we're here to serve the public. And the folks that work in our office, they work so hard, you know. And uh, just like, uh, just about mo like most people, they're not rich people, uh, you know. Um, they're never going to have uh, super yachts and Lamborghinis. Uh, they're average, everyday people that work incredibly hard, making a difference for the rest of the people in Broward County. And the passion that the folks here serve with, and uh, the work they do, impresses me every single day. I'm very, very blessed to have what I think is the best staff in Broward County. Awesome. Well, I'm impressed. So, you know, we oh, see it from our side as a title company doing a lot of deals. I mean, obviously more deals means always more problems. More things are found, more things are uncovered as we're doing our searches and stuff. And, and your staff is always on it. They're Thank on you. it and better than any county we deal with. Thank and we so deal much. with a lot of the other ones and sometimes it's super frustrating. I so. really appreciate it. May I pass it along to some of them later on? Absolutely, really absolutely. Good. And they'll show them the video, man. They'll know, they'll know our name. So. I will. That's so nice of you to say, Kevin. Oh, Thank you very no much. So we deal with a couple of different types of clientele. So obviously we're gonna try and just cover really quick for each of them, kind of your advice of what you would tell Absolutely. them. So I know you speak at, at several real estate offices because mm -hmm. I see you posting all the time. I know you've come over to the Charles Rittenberg office and mm -hmm. spoken there. And what, what advice do you have for real estate agents? Because what I found, uh, because I've been a licensed real estate broker for years, although I don't practice, is that they just don't have a clear understanding of the process. Sure. And I think that's something that we'd like to share with them just whatever advice you have if they're a real estate agent representing a buyer what should they be telling their clients that is such a great question and i really appreciate that you know i love our real estate community and the reason being is because they're kind of like our window to the world you know uh, there are so many people that we get to help every single day because their real estate agent sends them our way 
And there's so much information we can give, especially when it comes to the amount of property taxes that people are going to pay. And the reason I bring that up is uh, the first example is let's say you're a first time home buyer. When you're a first time home buyer, I think you're thinking of a few things. You're thinking, is this going to be a great place for me to raise my family? And can I afford the monthly payment? And the monthly payment is always the mortgage, the insurance, and the taxes. And that first time home buyer, they know what the mortgage is, they know what the insurance is, and they think they know what the taxes are, but they may not. And the reason being is because the first time that they own that property, they pay the first year, they pay the taxes of the previous owner. Then what happens on the next year, our office is required by Florida law to reset that property to market value based on the purchase price if it's an arm's length transaction. And so what happens is the value of their tax on generally goes from here to here, and so their taxes go from here to here. So the first thing is before somebody buys a home, uh, I think something that is so responsible is when a real estate agent says, okay, you know, this is gonna be your first home. And uh, I want you to really have a clear understanding as to what your property taxes are gonna be so you can make sure you afford this home. And what they can do is they can email me or they can go on our website at vcpa.net and what they can do is they can use our tax estimator to really find out what their property taxes will be the year after they buy the home so they can make sure they can afford it. Another thing that's very, very important is realtors are instrumental in helping us save people a lot of money in their taxes. And let me tell you why. One wonderful program is called Portability. Portability gives people the opportunity to move from one home and to another home and not be taxed out of that home. And here's the way it works. Am I talking for too long? Oh, you're good. Oh, no, great. no, this is great stuff. Oh, thank you. And here's the way it works. Once you bought your home, you filed for a homestead exemption. And when you did that, it did two things. The first thing it did was take $50,000 of value off the tax roll you don't pay taxes on. It can save you $800, $900, maybe $1,000 a year. But most importantly, what it does, it kicks in what's called the Save Our Homes Assessment Clause of the Florida Constitution, and it caps the value of your tax on either 3% a year or the consumer price index, whichever is lower. So this year, for example, the consumer price index is 1.9%. So that means even if the market value of your home, what a willing buyer would pay a willing seller, because of 50, 60, 70%, the value of your tax on can't go up more than 1.9%. So over time, your value is capped, so it stays low, but your market value gets much higher. So you have all this value in between, you don't pay taxes on it. Well, if you wanna buy a home of, of equal value or greater value, you take whatever difference in that value you don't pay taxes on, and you bring it to your new homestead and don't pay taxes on it. If you buy a home of lower value, uh, you take a percentage of that and you can just go on our website at bcpa.net, click on our portability estimator, and you can see how much money you're gonna save in your property taxes because of portability. It is a great thing that really gives people the opportunity to move uh, so they can afford their new home and not be taxed out of it. That's important. You know, we see a lot of times because we prorate the taxes. Yes. And the contract calls for prorating it based off of last year's assessment. Right. So the thing is, I'm prorating it off of the seller's taxes yes. currently. And if they have a seller that's owned this home for the last 30 years, yes. and they've had homestead plus other exemptions, which we'll talk about in a second, yes. their tax rate is super low. So people yes. think, wow, I can afford this. And then when year two kicks in, yes. their escrow account is short. Now they have to start making up for that. You know, this isn't like, you know, the average homeowner doesn't have, you know, thousands of dollars sitting in the bank says, oh, there's an increase, I'll just pay it. They're yes. escrowing for taxes and insurance, and they're just not able to afford the payments. So. Absolutely. You know, one of the um, most difficult calls that I'll get, uh, you know, maybe usually once a month or so, is usually from a first time home buyer who didn't know what was going to happen to their property taxes. Because you, you were exactly right with what you said. When somebody qualifies for a mortgage, uh, you have to use basically the information that you have at that time. And so you're going to use whatever the current taxes are of the previous owner. And generally, the previous owner's taxes are going to be much lower than what the new owner's taxes are going to be. And because they probably were homestead, homestead exempted, they had that uh, cap we spoke about in place, so the value they'd be taxed on is probably pretty low. And then what occurs is the next year, we reset that value to market value based on the purchase price for the new owner. And so usually the taxable value goes from here to here, and that's when they realize that they're very short in their escrow and they're going to have a hard time dealing affording it. And so what I always tell the people, at that time, I can't help you. You know, the market's the market, uh, the values are the values, and people have to pay their fair share. But we can help people on the front end. And so many realtors send their clients to us and say, listen, Marty, please let them know exactly what their taxes are going to be based on this year's millage rate when it resets. And we'll look at the purchase price, and then we'll give them a really good idea so they can really understand if they can afford uh, that property. And then also realtors will send us and say, hey, Marty, uh, you know, uh, they have all this value they don't pay taxes on their current homestead. What does that mean? We can let them know, okay, this is what your taxes will be reduced to based on the, this year's purchase price. And then realtors will also send them over for other reasons too. A good example is one realtor had a friend who was a totally and permanently disabled veteran. 
and his, uh, uh, his disability was 100% service connected. And as a result, he's 100% exempt from paying property taxes, but he didn't know that. And she only found out because she had a conversation with him. And she emailed me and she said, Marty, I have a question for you. My client is a totally and permanently disabled veteran. So he's 100% disabled, it's all service connected. What does that mean for him if he buys a new home for his property taxes? And I let her know, I go, well, if he provides me this specific documentation, the year after the property resets the market value, he'll be fully exempt from paying property taxes. And then she was able to go back to him and give him the information that I gave her and say, if you provide this to Marty, uh, this is what your monthly payment's gonna be because you will pay no property taxes. And that made it to where he was able to afford the property. And that kind of gets into all the exemptions. There's so many exemptions uh, that people, may I go on to those? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was just gonna say, cause we're leading sure. into the next question, which talks about the exemptions. Absolutely. And while we were sitting in the lobby waiting for you, uh, to invite us in, there was a, a gentleman there, he was 70 years old, and I guess he said there was the um, exemption for the senior exemption, but he said he never knew about it, so he was here to file for it. So I th is it 65? It is, that's a great question. So um, there are a number of exemptions under Florida law that people can qualify for. And when, some are very large and some are very small, but you can stack all the exemptions to reduce your tax bill. And so uh, the most important one by far is the homestead exemption. What that basically means, if you've made Broward County your primary residence, you live in that home, that's where you're registered to vote. If you don't vote, where your declaration of domicile, where your car is registered to, basically that's where you live, you get a homestead exemption. What it does, it takes $50,000 of value off the tax or right off the top, can save you at the beginning 800, 900, maybe 1,000 bucks a year. And once you get that, uh, you may qualify for other exemptions after that. And what you can do is you can stack the exemptions to reduce your tax bill. My favorite one, and you just brought it up, is what's called the low income senior exemption. You know, Broward County is a big place. More people live here than 13 states, the District of Columbia, and all U.S. territories except Puerto Rico. And we have a very large senior population. And something that I realized a long time ago was one of our most impoverished population are our seniors. There are so many seniors that have to, that don't get to eat dinner at night, or that have to, just, to figure out if they can afford their medication, and that really have a very tough time making ends meet. And I know if we can save them a little bit of money, that's more money they can put in their pocket and that they can live a little better of a life. And the low income senior exemption saves them quite a bit of money. We've given almost 24,000 of these out since January of this year. And what it basically means, if you're a senior and you're over 65 years of age and you make under $30,000 a year, and if you don't file income taxes, Social Security doesn't count, if you do file income taxes, you have to look at line seven of your income tax statement, which is your adjusted gross income. If that's under 30,000, you get another $25,000 value exemption. So I like to tell people, think about it like this. Imagine your mom or your dad lives in Century Village, Pembroke Pines. They get a, and we value their property at $100,000. They get, a, they get a homestead exemption, $50,000 of value is taken off the tax roll. They then get a low-income senior exemption, $25,000 is taken off the tax roll. What that really means is they're only paying taxes on $25,000 worth of value, or their taxes are roughly one-fourth of what they would have been without any exemptions. There are also some cities that have what's called the super senior exemption. That's what I mean, the super senior exemption. And what that means is cities that have adopted that basically state if you're over 65 years of age, you make under $30,000 a year. If you don't file income tax, the Social Security doesn't count. And if you've been in your house for more uh, than 25 years and your value of your home is under $250,000 of value, then you're fully exempt from paying the city portion of the tax bill, which is a lot of money. And we've had, I believe, 11 cities that have adopted that. And what I tell all of our cities is, you know, very few seniors qualify for that. So that really is a very, is a drop in the bucket when it comes to the lost revenue that those cities will get. But for those seniors that it helps, it's a world of a difference because it saves them a lot of money. And so I always try to convince all of our cities to adopt it because it's a great thing. And it puts food in their it does in their mouth, right? It, it helps them buy food, pay electric, it pay does. a telephone bill, maybe buy their their grandchildren a birthday present. It does. I mean, every dollar that can be saved is a dollar spent Absolutely. somewhere else. Absolutely, without a doubt. And so I, I love that exemption, and it always feels so good to be able to give it. Uh, there are some very large exemptions for veterans. We just kind of spoke about one before. If you're a totally and permanently disabled veteran and you're 100% disabled, you're fully exempt from paying property taxes. Same for totally and permanently disabled first responders who are 100% disabled, and they were Florida first responders when the disability occurred. If you're not 100% disabled, but you're combat disabled, and you're a combat disabled veteran, you get a percentage reduction in your property taxes that correlates to your disability. So if, you have a, if you're 70% disabled, then you're 70% reduced in property taxes. 50%, 50%. If you're not combat disabled and not 100% totally and permanently disabled, but still a disabled veteran and a service connected, you still get a pretty large reduction. 
There are other exemptions as well. Every widow is entitled to a small reduction exemption. Every uh, person who's visually impaired is entitled to an exemption in their property taxes. It's small, but it gets stacked on the rest of your exemptions to reduce your tax bill. And I always tell people, please go on our website at bcpa.net, click on exemptions, go through all of them, and if there's something that you're not getting, we have all the way until September 18th of this year to give it to you so when your tax bill comes out in November that it's going to be accurate and it's going to be so you only pay your fair share and not too much. That's awesome. That's good stuff. Oh, thank you. So we talked about a lot of positive stuff, exemptions, saving money, and, and knowing your estimate of tax values. I want to take one little quick turn into something sure. that we see often that, that yeah. kind of is the negative side to it, and that's people that are falsifying their homes. Sure. You know, we see a lot of times we'll see tax penalties and things from someone doing that or, yes. or we see people that you know they try and homestead two different properties by putting a property in one name and another name sure. uh, so how does that work how do you guys realize what they're doing and what are the penalties for people that try and do that that is a great question so my view is when people pay their property taxes they just pay their fair share nothing more and nothing less if they're not getting an exemption like we spoke about they're paying too much in their taxes that's not their fair share Conversely, if they're getting something that they're not supposed to get, if they're frauding the system, if they're cheating the system, if they're getting an exemption they're not entitled to and they're knowingly getting that exemption, then they're committing fraud. And what that means is they're paying too little in their taxes and then it hurts everybody else playing by the rules. So we also have a very aggressive fraud division that goes throughout the county every single day and it cracks down on people who aren't playing by the rules. And what they'll do if somebody is getting an illegal exemption, they'll take away the exemption, we'll back tax them up to 10 years, we'll include a 50% penalty and 15% interest. It can be very hefty, but it's hefty because the legislature has determined it wants to deter people from cheating the system. And let me give you an example. Let's say somebody lives in New York. If they live in New York, they probably have an exemption called the STAR exemption. It's an educational property tax exemption. They then move here to Broward County and they file for a homestead exemption. And they check the box in the application that says, I have no other exemption anywhere else. Well, under Florida law, you can only have exemptions on one property. You can't have exemptions on more than one property. If you do that, you're committing fraud. So during that time, while well, that person that has their home in New York and has the star exemption and has their home here in Broward County at Homestead exemption, they're committing fraud. And they're going to get a reduction in their tax bill here in Broward County for some time. But ultimately, our fraud division, which is, who's the, which is made up of basically retired uh, Broward Sheriff's deputies and people that really, really know how to find uh, folks who are not playing by the rules, they'll find out. And what they'll do is they'll take away the illegal exemption, we'll back tax them, include all the penalties. And to give you an idea, our fraud division has put about $7 billion of value back on the tax roll. That equates to millions of dollars of property taxes paid a year. And we've collected about $70 million in back taxes and have returned that to the public. That's awesome. Yeah, I know we see it all the time because it gets recorded and we have to pay it at closing. And you know they did something they shouldn't have done, but obviously the idea of this video is to, so you don't do it. You, right. They don't move forward and try and do something they shouldn't Absolutely. be doing and understand how hefty the penalty is. So, it's true. You thank know, you. It's, you know, it's uh, every once in a while it can be innocent and, and I understand that. But, um, but there are some folks out there who understand that if they do this, uh, they'll get a reduction in their taxes and they think that that we'll never find out. But our fraud division, to me, is incredibly important because it's here to protect our taxpayer dollars. It's here to protect everybody in Broward County. So I always tell people, please don't commit fraud because at the end of the day, because we take that very seriously and we're going to find out. And, uh, and the penalties are, are really big and we really don't want to have to make you pay those penalties. But if you commit fraud, we will because that's what the legislature said we have to do. And I believe that's our job in protecting our taxpayer dollars. Awesome, awesome, good Definitely. stuff. So you have time for one more question? Of course, without All right. a doubt. So, so one of the things, you know, we see you talk at some of the in investor clubs with the real sure. estate investors, and, and we have a very large real estate investor clientele base. And, and one of the things that we deal with, and it's kind of twofold that I wanted to talk about, is land trusts. We sure. deal with a lot of land trusts, and we deal with a lot of homeowners putting properties in a revocable trust. Sure. And I know there's kind of a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Can we just elaborate a little bit, maybe start with clients for asset protection, want to put a property in the trust and how that would affect their taxes. So well here is uh, the only way, so I'll tell you this, here's the, the only issue with that and I'll definitely answer it the best that I can, but what I've learned about Broward County is every property is specific and what might work for one may not work for another and so I get very um, uh, uh, careful about answering questions that can be specific in a general manner because I don't want to give people bad advice. Right, no, absolutely. And, uh, and it's a great question though. Uh, I generally, I can definitely tell you, generally trusts can have a homestead exemption. So there are people that um, will, uh, when they file for homestead, they put in their trust. 
And there are people that have existing homestead exemptions where it's in their name, where they can move it to a trust and generally it won't be considered a change of ownership, which would reset the value. Um, with regard to everything else, uh, when it comes to the ownership of property and whether or not to put uh, your property in trust when you're gonna change the deed, uh, that's when we always say uh, that people should always, always consult their attorney to get the best advice possible. Right. But um, I, I definitely understand, I think your question is a wonderful question, but I'm a little bit weary about answering it because I don't want somebody to rely on the advice and it not work out well. No, oh, absolutely. So, I mean, I think the moral of the story here is that if they want family type trust, may qualify Good. and other types of trusts that may be done for yes. investment purposes to hide their name may be taxed so they could find themselves in a position where their taxable value will right. go up because it's counted as a transfer. What I always tell people is, um, you know, if you're going to do something with your property, if you're going to change a deed, put in a trust, whatever you're going to do, uh, use us as a resource. Uh, you know, if, um, if we know the specific property and the specific situation, we can give you some, based some information so you can make the best decision possible. I'll always say, you know, you should always consult an attorney. Uh, but what we'll also do as well is basically give people information. And um, so if anybody out there is going to do anything with their property, if you're going to change the deed, if you have an investment property, you're going to change the deed, just give me a holler. Let's go through it together. Uh, my legal counsel will also go through it with you as well. And we'll just kind of give you some information so you can make a really good decision. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the best thing to do is always consult your own attorney. Absolutely. And education is important. That's okay. why we do videos like this because we want you to learn before they start earning and make mistakes. Because Absolutely. what happens is all they're going to do is cut into their income yeah. because Absolutely. if they transfer a property and the taxes go up, they've now cut into their, you know, their profit. That's Absolutely. their profit. Every penny they save on taxes mm -hmm. is money in their pocket. So every yes. dollar they spend on taxes mm -hmm. is money out of their pocket. So Absolutely. it makes sense. There's a resource here. You have to call, ask the questions before you make the move. Cause we get people call us all the time and they're like, oh, we're going to do a quick claim deed. I'm like, that's the scariest word in our office yeah. because they don't realize they pay the minimal doc stamps, which is the yeah. $10. And they say, well, the county recorded it. I said, the county will record anything yeah. you send to them if it's a legal document. Yes. Doesn't mean you're not gonna get a letter from the Department of Revenue saying it wasn't a regular you know, transfer. It's doc stamps are due. Here's what, what doc stamps are based off of it. Now they have to spend thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't make sense. You might as well call before Absolutely. you start doing something. You know, I'll give you a great example. Um, let's say hypothetically, uh, somebody owns a rental property. And let's say they bought the property in their own name, let's say 10 years ago. And, uh, and now let's say they wanna change the deed to take, put that property in a limited liability company because they're afraid if they own it personally that if somebody sues them, they're sued you know, personally. They wanna put it in a limited liability company so the limited liability company is sued. Well, under Florida law, if it's non-homestead property, so property that's not your homestead, there's what's called the 10% cap. That basically means the value that you're taxed on can't go more than 10% a year, except for the school portion of the tax bill. So generally, if you would have bought your home, some, your, your investment property that's a rental property, let's say some time ago, there would be value that you wouldn't pay taxes on. But if you now decide to change that deed to take it out of your own name and put it in a limited liability company, even if you're the only principal there, under Florida statutory law, that would be a change of ownership. And all that value that you don't pay taxes on would go away, and now you'd be paying taxes on it, so your tax bill will go up. And it kind of goes along to what, what you were saying, because I always tell folks, if they're gonna do anything with their deed, anything with regard to the ownership structure, if they're gonna put their property in a trust, whatever they're gonna do, just use us as a resource. And we'll go through your specific situation and we'll give you information uh, so you can make a great decision possible. Yeah, that Office Depot deed doesn't work. You right. know, we see it all the time. Yeah. And we see issues on deeds. Like, Absolutely. why did you fill this out yourself? I mean, you, you made so many mistakes on it and we're dealing with one now that thank God the, the person was still alive. She deeded the property to her daughter before the, like two days before the husband passed away. Yeah. And then they never dealt with the husband's interest. So now yeah. the husband passed away. Thank God the mother's still alive because now she can deed the spouse interest over sure. to, to the buyer now four years later. You know, but they just don't realize. They try and prepare these deeds themselves, and what they they wind up happening in the end is they wind up costing them more money. It costs right. them more money in taxes, in doc stamps, in insurance, and and they do it because they went to some seminar that said asset protection, put your property in an LLC or into a trust. Yeah. So they do it because they want to save the money because they bought some program that said do it, and then all of a sudden a year down the road or two years down the road when someone realizes they did it, they get hit with a huge bill. Yes, you know what, what I always tell people, and this is just my, the, the guidance I always give. You know, I'm not a doctor, so anytime I have some type of ailment or my kids are sick, 
The last thing I do is Google it and try to figure it out on my own because I have no idea uh, whether, you know, I, I would know, I have no idea what they have and how to treat it or how what I have or how I could treat it. I go to a real doctor and that doctor tells me, okay, this is what the issue is and this is how we can make you better. Uh, the same thing for this. Uh, you know, um, our office, for example, really knows a whole lot about every piece of property in Broward County. There's a lot of information we have. And so I always tell people, if you're thinking about doing something, just use us as a resource. Let's uh, see if we can give you information that can help you. Maybe there's something that we can walk you through to make sure that all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted so everything works out very well for you. And so it won't come back later on to put you in a more difficult situation. But I always do say, especially on these things, that it's so important uh, that if you're going to do anything, that you consult your own lawyer. Because at the end of the day, the lawyer is going to know exactly what to do. And I think it's also wonderful that, uh, that you work so closely with your clients. Uh, ensuring that uh, what they do, you know, is 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 right in their best interest. We want to make sure they're best yeah. protected, so they know the Absolutely. risks. And, and we tell them, we direct them straight to an attorney. Here's our attorney. Here, if you got to ask them a question, you know, when we talk about quick claim deeds, most title companies will just do them. Yeah. We tell them no. It's a two hundred and fifty dollar consult and two hundred and fifty dollars if you decide to do the deed. And the reason is, is because our attorney has found that for the two hundred and fifty dollar consult. They usually decide not to do the deed because they have to pay doc stamps or it could mess up their asset protection, their estate planning, so it just doesn't make sense. Absolutely, and that also kind of falls under the thing we spoke about before. Like I said, for me, I found that every property in Broward County is specific and different. And what may work for one may not work for another. And so I always tell folks, just try to use, uh, when you're going to do something, try to, as we said before, just go take all avenues you possibly can, get as much information as possible so that you know what you do really works out well for you. And we would love to be, uh, you know, one of the, the resources uh, that you all utilize because, you know, I always tell this, and I don't know if I said this before, Yama, an elected official, everybody in this office is a public servant. We're not here to make money. We're basically here to provide information and to serve the public. And so it would be our pleasure to help you any way that we can on your property. Thanks for taking oh, thank the time. You. And for those of you that enjoyed this video, please click the red subscribe button so this way you get notified of our next episode. We start doing them sometimes every week, sometimes every month. Every time we come up with a great topic or a great uh, guest that can come on our show, we try and produce some quality information to send out to you. So just click the red subscribe button to look out for next week's episode. So thanks for watching this episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO, signing off. And as always, I look forward to seeing you at the closing table. Bye, everybody.